morning. This is our fifth lecture in bone and joint pathology. In this lecture, we will identify the pathological features and radiology of various bone tumors, including myelogenic tumor, lymphoma, giant cell tumor, and metastatic bone tumors. Also, we will study the pathogenesis, morphology, and clinical features of osteoporosis. The first myelogenic tumor we will demonstrate is the plasma cell myeloma. It is a multiple lesion affecting any bone of the body, especially the irregular bones. It causes renal insufficiency with pathological fracture and metastatic calcification with amyloidose. Grossly, it is a current jelly tumor with multiple lytic lesions shown in the X-ray. Under the microscope, there are sheets of immature plasma cells and amyloid formation. Here is radiologic features of multiple myeloma in the skull and the pelvic bone with multiple lytic lesions. Grossly, the tumor appears soft and hemorrhagic, like current gel appearance. Under the microscope, it is hypercellular with multiple abnormal pleomorphic plasma cells with amyloid formation. In the upper two photos, showing the difference between normal serum electrophoresis pattern and the abnormal seen with the multiple myeloma. In the right side, there is a spike of abnormal M protein. In the lower photo, it shows the crystals of Benz Jones proteins in the urine. Ewing sarcoma, the second myelogenic malignant tumor, it occurs in the children, in the diaphysis of the long bones, with unfortunately early blood spread. It produces an osteolytic lesion with a new bone formation forming onion scanning in the X-ray. Under the microscope, it forms round blue cell tumor in, in the form of sheets with rosetting and rich cytoplasmic glycogen. It is a diaphyseal tumor with reactive onion scanning bone appearance of the X-ray. It's a hypercellular small round blue cell tumor with rosetting, stain positive with PS due to glycogen and stain positive with CD99 in immunohistochemistry. The second bone tumor we will discuss is the lymphoma. It's a non-Hodgkin type, occurs in adults in the either in the metaphysis or diaphysis it has a, a good prognosis anyway it produces multiple uh, lytic lesions and under the microscope it is formed of malignant lymphocytes stain positive with either cd20 or cd3 the giant cell tumor is of unknown cell of origin it occurs in the middle age females it affects the epiphysis of the long bones. It's a low malignant potential tumor. It is an osteolytic lesion with so bubble calcification in radiology. And under the microscopy, it forms a mono, it's formed of mononuclear cells and multinucleated giant cells. Here, the both appearance of the epiphyseal tumor with soap bubble calcification and under the microscope the two components of cells the mononuclear and the giant cell here is a table to differentiate different grades of giant cell tumor regarding the two component cells mononuclear and giant cells but we should emphasize that grading has no value because it is a potentially low grade malignant tumor it occurs in about 50% of cases and can send metastasis in 10% of cases regardless of the grade of the tumor. 
Metastatic tumors is considered to be the commonest tumors of the bone. It may occur in adults or in children. Any bone can affect it. It's usually an osteolytic lesion, but sometimes it's an osteoplastic in cases of prostatic adenocarcinoma or maybe mixed affection. Here is a scheme for the all the bone tumors, a comparative, a comparative scheme with regarding the age and the presentation and the site of affection of the bone, whether it is an epiphyseal, metaphyseal, or diaphyseal tumor. Here is a table for dif differentiation between different tumors with radiology, either being a radiolucent or radio-opaque tumor. It helps you to study tumors regarding comparison in between them. Now, we will start the subject of osteoporosis. First of all, we should ask ourselves, is bone is an inert out or stable tissue? Good morning. This is our fifth lecture in bone and joint. Bone is a dynamic tissue with constant breakdown and renewal. This is called bone remodeling. Depending on many factors, the net effects may be maintenance, loss, or deposition of bone matrix. The balance in between the two processes is determined by relative activities of osteoblast which deposit bone and osteoclast, which resolve. Here is a scheme showing the balance in between bone resorption and bone formation. The result of this will appear in the childhood and early adulthood that bone formation exceeds bone resorption. The bone mass reaches its peak at two to third decades or second to third decades of life. In the fourth decade, it begins to decrease, and in the old age, acceleration of bone resorption will occur. This balance occurs in between both cells either by a local cross talk or by circulating factors that impact their function. So the cross talk in between both cells is done via two factors. The osteoblast has a rank ligand that stimulate the differentiation of osteoclast and produce bone resorption. At the same time, the osteoplast secrete osteobotigrine that blocks the rank ligand and prevent osteoclast differentiation, thus preventing the bone resorption. On the other hand, Osteoblast and osteoclast are regulated by different circumstances like circulating factors including vitamin D, parathyroid hormone, and growth factors. Glucocorticoid promotes osteoblast differentiation. Sex hormones, it blocks osteoclast differentiation. The definition of osteoporosis is a decrease in the total bone mass or what is called osteopenia. It may be a localized, such as an immobilized extremity, or generalized in case of old age or postmenopausal with secondary osteoporosis. 
Here are some causes of secondary osteoporosis. There is an interaction in between nutritional state, secondary causes, and genetic factors. All of them will interact together to determine the big bone mass. During menopause, there will be a decrease in the serum estrogen, which will increase the interleukins 1, 6, and tumor necrosis factor. This will bind the rank and suppress the OBG, leading finally to increased osteoclastic activity and resorption of bone. In the old age, the osteoplast formation of is decreased and also decrease the osteoplast function. The growth factors, extracellular matrix are also decreased, decreased physical activity. All of this will lead finally to decrease in the bone mass. So we should emphasize that, that the physical activity stimulates bone remodeling, specifically the resistant exercise more than the endurance activities such as jogging. In osteoporosis, there is an osteopenia with decreased bone matrix. Thin cortex, thin broken trabeculae of the cancellous bone. The trabeculae are thinned with the loss of their interconnection. Osteoclast activity is present but not dramatically increased. The mineral content is normal. This is the very important differentiation from osteomalacia. On osteoporosis, the vertebral bone showing microfractures and deformities. The clinical features are pain due to microfractures, vertebral column showing loss of height, neck femur and vertebrae they show microfractures with complications of surgery there is a severe deformity as kyphoscoliosis that sometimes compromise the respiratory functions sometimes it remains asymptomatic until skeletal fragility is advanced thank you for your attention